Hey everyone, welcome to Breathe Kids Church. If it's your first time this week, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lucy and myself and the Breathe Kids team are so glad you are here. This month our series is called Lie Detectors and we are now on week two. So if you missed last week, why not go back and have a watch because we learned so much. I'm now going to hand over to our amazing worship team. So let's go and praise Jesus together. love praising Jesus with you. I'm now going to hand over to the liar and Jeremy. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. You have? Did you know your pals, Devon and Alex, have got the answer key for tomorrow's test? They, they, they did? Look, I know maths isn't your thing, so do you know what I think you should do? I should study math after my Bible study? No, call Devon and get the answer key. I can't do that. Yes, you can! But it's wrong. Did you say wrong? Yes, yes I did. Let me tell you something. Wrong is a human invention and so is right. What are you, what are you saying? I'm saying wrong, whatever, wrong and right whatever they, we say they are. They are different for different people. I expect a goody two-shoes like your silly pal Savannah to turn down the chance of looking at the answer key, but not you. Why not me? Because I don't believe in right and wrong. Yes, I do. Well, you shouldn't. Why not? 
Because there are no absolutes. There is no absolute right and no absolute wrong. But isn't that an absolute statement? Saying that there is absolutely uh, right and wrong? Mm, no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's not. There, you've just said another absolute statement. I did not. You did it just then. I never said anything absolute. You did it, just not. Oh, forget it. Study your maths, do the right thing. I thought you said there was no right thing. Ah, shut up. Thank you so much, Jeremy and the liar. That was awesome. Now's the time for you to go and get your notebooks, your Bibles and your pens ready to take some notes. You've got 10 seconds. Go. <laughs> What do you think is the biggest lie told about breaking rules? One lie I'm sure we've all heard is, you're not going to get caught. I think we've all experienced how big a lie that can be. No matter how quiet and sneaky we may try to be, most of the time we still get caught. We're just not as stealthy as we think we are. How about this lie? Everybody's doing it. No, not everybody. There may be more people than you think breaking a certain rule, but not everyone is doing it. There are always plenty of people following the rules and doing the right thing, no matter how difficult, because it is the right thing to do. He is the real whopper when it comes to right and wrong. This is the one that trips up more people than any. It's a lie that says, there is no right or wrong. This lie wants us to believe that right and wrong are concepts that humans made up, not something given to us by God. If there is no God, and we as humans created right and wrong, then who is to say what's right for one person is right for everyone? If there's no absolute truth, no absolute right or wrong, then we should all be free to do whatever we want, whenever we want. And if someone says to you, that's wrong, you tell them to stop enforcing their beliefs on you. The Bible tells us that there is an absolute right and wrong. God teaches us right and wrong in the Bible so that we can obey him and do good to others. God even predicted that a time would come when people would become lawless, doing whatever feels right to them and disobeying God's commands. That's why Paul urged his student Timothy to remember the Bible and follow what God says about right and wrong. So I'm now going to read you a summary of 2 Timothy chapter 3. It says this. The final countdown. Like in his previous letter, Paul explains again that there will be lots of people turning away from God as the world comes to an end. Paul warns everyone to stay away from all kinds of bad folks, including arrogant jerks, greedy people, abusers, disobedient children, liars and lovers of pleasure. Well, there goes their weekend plans. There are also people out there who prey on silly women in the church. They make their way into their homes and teach them all kinds of nonsense. But in the end, they've got no clue what they're talking about. Paul wants Timothy to be just like him. Faithful, patient, loving and all the good stuff. Oh, and don't be afraid of persecutions. Paul's had his share, but in the end, it all turned out fine. Except, of course, that last time when he got beheaded. Paul says, if you want to follow Jesus, you're going to get some flack. It's just a fact. But if Timothy keeps the faith, he'll get through it and help others figure out where they're going wrong in the process. Good luck, Tim. Paul could easily be writing about our modern world in this chapter. People today have bought that lie that there is absolutely no right or wrong, and they've used that lie to justify all sorts of evil things. They get money and things by whatever means they can. They hoard their wealth rather than helping others. They do things that please them, regardless of what the Bible says. They do these things whilst telling themselves there is no absolute right and wrong, so I will do whatever feels right to me. God tells us there is a right way and a sinful way. We can choose to follow his way or we can choose to walk in the way of sin. There is a right and wrong and God makes it very clear which is which. If we are wise, we will heed the words of Paul. We will cling to the truth and we will strive to do what God says is right. People who believe there is no absolute right or wrong see the world as being full of grey areas. Well, that's okay for you, they say, but not for me. I don't see things as black or white. It's grey. 
what's right for you isn't right for me because there is no absolute right and wrong. You want to know the funny thing about this lie, big lie today? The big lie is a black and white statement. The big lie says there are no absolutes. There is no absolute right and wrong. You can't use an absolute statement declaring there is no such thing as right and wrong and believe in a world with no absolute truth. What would the world be like if there were no absolutes? It would be chaos. If there was no right and wrong, there would be nothing to hold some people back from stealing, from harming others and doing great evil things to others. Everyone would do what they want, regardless of the consequences, and many people would be seriously hurt by others. I think we can all agree, this is already happening in our world. It's on the news every night, we hear it about people who think they're above the law, we hear the terrible things they do to others, and when they're caught, we hear their feeble forced apologies. They're not sorry for what they did, they're just sorry they got caught. Kids, there is an absolute right and wrong. God set the standard for our world, and if we do what is right, we will honour God and love others. Anyone who does otherwise will only bring harm to themselves or to other people. Let's reject that lie that there is no absolute truth. Let's ask God to teach us right from wrong so that we can make our world a better place for everyone. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, teach us what is right so that we can obey you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our memory verse this month is 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and it says this All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Say it with me. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Why not find this in your Bibles and underline it, write it in your notebook so you can remember this awesome memory verse. This week we have a brand new devotional for you which you can find on the Breathe New Life Church website underneath the Breathe Kids Church section. We hope you have enjoyed our second week of Lie Detectors. We certainly have. Why not come back next week to find out more? Have a great week guys and we'll see you soon. Bye!